Terry, good afternoon to you. Hello, Sarah. Good afternoon. Um, yours is an extreme example of isolation. Remind viewers what happened nearly 29 years ago now. Well, it is a long time ago. Uh, I was working in those days as a hostage negotiator. And I negotiated well way back with General Amin, with uh, Revolutionary Guards, with uh, Colonel Gaddafi. And when you do a dangerous job like that, you always know from the back of your mind something can go wrong. And in my case, it did go wrong in Beirut. And um, I found myself in captivity, first of all, in an underground cell, um, which was beneath a car park, a tiled cell. And uh, then later on in uh, a bombed out building in the upper floors of a bombed out building, I slept on the floor. Um, I had uh, no books or papers for almost four years. When anyone came in the room, I had to pull a blindfold over my eyes. There were metal shutters put in front of the window if I was upstairs, so no natural light came in. And I occasionally had electric light, but not always, often in the dark. And there was no one to speak with, um, nothing. I was chained to the wall by the hands and feet for 23 hours and 50 minutes a day. I remember that distinctly. I had about five minutes each day to go to the bathroom. So it was a case of extreme isolation and solitary living. Yeah, 1,736 days you were on your own. And as you mentioned, you were blindfolded for a lot of that time. So for around four and a half years, you didn't actually see another person. Mentally, how did you deal with that? Well, the first thing you have to do is to come to terms with, with anger, in my case. And many people at the moment will be at home and there are many people who would be deeply worried because they'd be worried about their jobs, they'd be worried about the future, they'd be worried about the family. Very, very understandable, and I have my sympathy. And I was worried. I was worried about my own family. I was worried about my own situation. Would I live? Because, you know, eventually I was, uh, I was tortured. Um, not severely, but I, bad enough, I can tell you. And I did have a, a mock execution. And so I had to come to terms with, with that, um, those, those extreme feelings. Uh, just as I say, people have to come to terms with those type of feelings today. And the way to do that, in part, is to try and live for the moment, try and live for now. Um, try and make the moment as full as possible. Now, how do you do that in captivity when you've no books, you've no papers, you've nothing? Well. I had to do that by mentally adjusting to the situation, saying there is little or nothing I can do to change this, but I can hold on to the fact that I have life now, not tomorrow, I have it now, and I'm going to live it as fully as possible. I began to write in my head, I began to use my mental capacity in a way and extend that. Um, and that was a way of just surviving. And as I say, there will be many people who are deeply afraid and deeply worried at the moment. Well, somehow, remember that this virus will be defeated. There will be a life after that. And, you know, things do have a habit of, 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 of turning out well if we want to work for them. For the majority of us, it will be fine. But we just somehow have to develop that capacity within ourselves to take the situation at the moment as it is. Yeah, Terry, it's interesting, isn't it? It's about reframing the way we think. I mentioned earlier, it's about being, well, saying things like we're safe at home rather than we're stuck at home and, and changing our mindset. You actually took quite a lot of positives out of your time in solitude. And as we've said, it's such an extreme and dark example, but even you found the positives in your situation. Well, yes. I mean, what uh, what I had to do also was try and keep myself. How do I say? Keep myself um, alive in in the following way. I mean, I'll tell you a, a, a silly story, but it's perfectly true. In the first week of captivity, I had my own clothes, and uh, at night I managed to get my trousers off, even though I was chained up. And I put them under the mattress uh, to press them. 
Now, that may sound really stupid. It's something I learned in the army. I was at the end of national service. And it's something I learned that in all these situations, keep your own dignity, keep yourself smart. And the same applies today, in a sense, when those people are at home in, in sort of lockdown. You know, don't just get up and hang around all day in a dressing gown or pajamas. Take a pride in your appearance. Uh, still, keep yourself smart, keep yourself, retain your own dignity. That's, that's really um, pretty important. The other thing to say is form a structure for the day. Um, now, there are, I, I'm sitting here now at home. I'm in lockdown at the moment. I've been alone for the past week, maybe, maybe a bit longer. But I'm so fortunate. I mean, I'm surrounded by my books. I'm surrounded by papers. I've got access through the internet. I've got a whole range of things. And I, I can use this time creatively, which I'm trying to do. I'm actually beginning to start to write a new book at the moment. But I can use it creatively. And that's what, again, we have to say, well, what is there in this situation that we can take and use creatively rather than emphasizing the negative? And that's important. And also at the moment, of course, some time ago, I founded an organization called Hostage International. And it's particularly hard for those families, you know, who got someone who's taken hostage and they have no idea where they are and they're trying to cope with a family with young children. Well, Hostage International gives families support and I'm in contact with them throughout this period with many, many families at any given time. There's something like 2,000 people in the world taken hostage. And there are all sorts of people in these extreme situations who, you know, are coping, but they need help and they need support. And um, where you don't have it, or where you don't have that, you have to find it from within yourself. And it is possible to find it from within yourself for the majority of people. Um, Terry, I mean, you tell such an inspirational tale given what you've gone through, but you know, everything is relative. People will take things from what you're saying and apply it to their own situations at home because many people aren't able to see their loved ones. Many people are on their own. What do you think we'll have learnt as a society when we come out the other side of this? Well, I remember a few years ago, uh, a politician saying there was no such thing as society. Well, I think that's been proved to be absolutely wrong. I, I'm here in Suffolk in a, in a small village. Now, we are... We are very, very fortunate because there is a good sense of community. On Saturday, I needed some shopping doing. On Sunday morning, someone left a bag of shopping uh, at, my, at my front door. I heard yesterday that the local church, through a charity, has organized a system of distributing meals for those that need it. And in all sorts of ways, people are responding. I think the, the British people, it, the, the time like this, often brings out the best in people. It brings out the worst in some people, and we've had examples of that. But, but overall, it brings out the best. And what I hope will happen is that we'll have a new sense of, of community, of society, when we've been through this. And in fact, even going much further than that, perhaps we'll have a new understanding that we need to be in tune and in touch with our environment in a way that Perhaps we haven't been in the past. You know, we've gone into all sorts of policies, building on green belt land, this, that and the other. We're going to need our agricultural land. We're going to need to support our farmers. We're going to need to support our, grow our own crops and grow our own food. Uh, perhaps a new world order is coming into being. If it is, I hope it's a world order that will mean that there will be greater justice and fairness for all people in the world. And at the moment, what has happened is in some strange sort of way, we've all been levelled. We've all been seen that we're all human beings and we're all vulnerable. And that if we can learn that we've got to be in touch and in tune with our environment uh, and determined to do that in the future, we shall all be the much better off for it. Yeah, Terry, we're all in this together. Terry, wait, a pleasure to speak to you uh, from your home in Suffolk, uh, where you yourself are isolating. Uh, better crack on with that book. Uh, thank you very much for your time here on Sky News this afternoon.